Hi guys, Troublemaker here, playing Civilization Beyond Earth, Rising Tide. A um, little bit of backstory about this game before getting into it. Um, Beyond Earth was supposed to be the big uh, expansion, an expansion, a uh, new version of Civilization, supposed to change the game, all that sort of stuff. Uh, it was designed specifically uh, to be played on Xbox. They had actually tried to expand Civilization V into tablets, uh, but it didn't take. People didn't play them on tablets. And it was a critical flop as far as that goes. Civilization V itself is one of the best selling games of all time, but it was really unable to join up with tablets, which is where they thought their market would go. Uh, so they decided, hey, let's go for consoles because consoles are really cool. So they made uh, Civilization Beyond Earth for consoles. Um, Civilization Beyond Earth, when it launched, was a critical flop. Uh, it was not popular at all. No one liked it. Uh, people stay with Civilization V. There's still more people playing Civilization V than Beyond Earth. This is almost a year later, and um, it just didn't work out. So they never actually released this on Xbox, as far as I know. Uh, they just, you know, have been working on it. And so they released this expansion called Rising Tide, which was set to basically fix the game. And by fix the game, uh, it's supposed to differentiate it more from Civ V, but uh, they've been working on a lot of bugs in the game and all that sort of stuff. And bugs, of course, is a a little bit of a play on here. Uh, so here's a few things. One is that I'm going to be playing on Apollo, and Apollo is significantly easier than it was before. Uh, Apollo before was basically impossible. I could do as high as Soyuz. Uh, now Apollo is doable. Uh, the problem before is that um, in, in the highest difficulty in Deity Civilization 5, you win by uh, basically making all your enemies go to war with each other and picking off parts of their empires. That's how you win a Deity Civ 5. Um, there's no trade options like that in this game, and so the difficulty threshold actually has to be reduced to even be possible, and, you know, there was literally nobody doing Apollo runs that were complete. No one could win, you know, and that's now changed. One thing that hasn't changed is that Massive is still only 8 players. Um, people were kind of hoping to, with the addition of new uh, factions that they'd become a 12-player Massive, but it didn't happen. So we'll be playing on standard size, which means uh, less territory. Uh, so we have some new factions. I'll be playing as the Alpha La, who are the Middle East. Uh, after a nuclear explosion, uh, they formed colonies with the survivors and uh, went into space without any kind of ability to have uh, all that, uh, not cryogenics, but uh, to be frozen basically. To be, I think it's cryogenics. And uh, so the people who left Earth on the Alpha La ship uh, were not the people who arrived. They actually had babies and lives and generations passed and no one even remembers, you know, what Earth was like. That's how many generations have passed. This is, you know, 200 years into the future. Uh, the next faction is the Norsi Alliance, who are aquatic-based, purely aquatic-based. They barely ever build on land. When they do build on land, it's along the ocean front. Uh, they are England, British Isles, Scandinavia, and Iceland. And they are purely sea-based. Uh, they will land on the ocean every single time, guaranteed. Uh, the Chung Thu are a new faction. They're uh, basically like Northern Chinese plus Japan. They're or Northern Chinese plus Koreas is what they are. And uh, yeah, apparently Australia region was not hit by nuclear attacks because everyone in that region seems to have survived and thrived. I mean, this is uh, this here and another one is all of them. You know, like that's a lot. Uh, Integer is the final new faction, so that's a. Uh, Four new factions and Integer, uh, it's hard to tell who they are just by the name. The GR is the key here. It's Germany. Uh, Germany has made an agreement with the uh, surrounding partners like Poland and uh, and uh, Br Brussels and you know all those guys to form a new organization that will be German led and it directly opposes the Franco Iberians. So I'm gonna go ahead and slash forward. Nothing has changed here. That's exactly the same. Uh, nothing has changed here. Also exactly the same. And uh, nothing changed there. All exactly the same. Uh, worth mentioning here, this is something I found out later. When you click random world, it's not actually a random world. It's a random world picked uh, randomly from this list of maps. Right? It's, it's not really a random world though. And there's only a certain number of maps in the game. If you really want a random world, you select custom world. You hit the type, and it tells you what the types are, and the bio. And that's the only way you get a real random world. But I'm not going to be picking a random, I'm picking a, a, a custom story, I'll be picking a random. So there's a good chance that the map that I start on will be a map that I am very aware of, that I've played before. Uh, I'm not going to do any event settings just yet. Um, 
I like to keep uh, a standard play here. And this is just a description of the uh, waking seed ships of the Alpha Law, where people were alive and, you know, having babies and artificial terrariums and nurseries and, you know, all this sort of stuff. So they're, uh, although they're the most human people on this particular map because they have had children and have actually lived for the 200 year period that uh, has passed, they are also the, the least Earth-like of the races. Um, because they have the least connection to Earth, and you know, all these leaders are over 200 years old, every single one of them, except for this one. This person's very, very young, and this is a very much a youth oriented thing. And that's actually very uh, similar to uh, Middle Eastern movements. Middle Eastern movements are very youth oriented. Uh, when you had the uh, Arab Spring that happened, it was all young men and young women taken to the streets and trying to overthrow. Uh, Moroccan governments, and Egyptian governments, and Syrian governments, and Turkish governments, and uh, of course we now know that that kind of led Hello. To, I am the advanced to, integration and to extremism, uh, but I mean it was, you know, it was what it was. I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to be playing a Harmony playthrough. And yeah, I'm going to use an Old Earth Relic to start to really boost up that number. And we're going to start with Pioneering because it's going to be the first mission that you always get. You kind of need Pioneering, it allows you to um, do something. And by the by, there's nobody on the map right now. It's me playing against myself right now. There's absolutely nobody on this map except for me. So. Just a little FYI there, nobody else on the map. Still now, and this person is pretty darn close. So this looks kind of like the uh, Franco-Iberians, judged by the Americans. Here is something new right off the bat, we call Alien Hydro Corals. And what Alien Hydro Corals will do is they will expand upon the map, taking up sea space. And sometimes, but not always, when melee units get in range of them, they will attack. If you attack them with me anything melee, they will 100% win all the time. They are the most powerful unit in the game, but they can't move. The only way they can move is through aggressive expansion. They can uh, basically give birth to a new uh, Astro Coral. And uh, yeah, they can be a bit of a nuisance. But they're also a valuable source of experience. So here's another new thing, it's called the Artifacts. Uh, you can get these from digging around or from other things. And this is why I open with a second explorer. Uh, you can mix them in here and you get culture. If you mix three in together of varying strengths and sizes, um, you will get a science. Or a, a, not a science, but a part of a science actually. Uh, so we want to do a another explorer. So tell me patrol boat when I'm saying second explorer. Uh, patrol boats are actually not that useful early on, be, uh, other than the fact that they can patrol the map and find out where things are. They're not that useful. Uh, what's more useful are getting those, uh, uh, what we call them, uh, uh, gunships, gunboats. I think you call it gunboats. Gunships, a helicopter. So, first few turns don't take very long because there's not a lot of players on the map and they come in various times. So I'm going to be playing the, plus, or sorry, the, the, the knowledge tree here, and uh, uh, we're going to domesticate wildlife. This is a long way down the road. Um, yeah, as far as the virtue strategy goes, might is the worst one to go. Might is the worst. I mean, getting this one here is not too bad. Just this first one is not bad. But as far as a pure tree to go down, it is the absolute worst. You, you're better off starting with one of these. Prosperity is going to give you bigger cities, population-wise. Knowledge is going to give you a technological lead for better units. And industry is going to give you more units and more money. Uh, so, yeah. I think knowledge is the best because uh, the economics of this game is very different from Civ 5. You can't actually trade anything at all. There's no trading allowed in this game. Um, I'll show this later on, but when you go to the, uh, the diplomatic screen, they, you know, 
with no trading available. You can make these new things called diplomatic agreements, but you can't actually trade with anybody. That's a bit of a pain. Oh, here we go. So this is the Nelesi Alliance. They always settle on water. That's the guaranteed place they will always be. And we've discovered a marble. A giant fungi. So, uh, with these marbles, uh, there are always going to be one on the map. And they're a little bit funky, the marbles. Um, once you discover the big one, uh, seven or eight or nine of them will appear on the map. Smaller ones. And you have to investigate the smaller ones. And after you've investigated the smaller ones, then suddenly you can build a... You can do a, a mission objective that'll get you lots of points and all that sort of jazz. Uh, so I'm going to send this guy down this way. So you got to pull this guy back to get another uh, thing. And building around these does give some sort of benefit, but usually they're in a combination of desert and other bonuses. It's not the best, and you will rarely ever see anyone build around them. Uh, this could be the Chung Su. They tend to build on the water as well. Chung Su and the North Sea Alliance. Guys, go ahead, all the way back here. And once I have my third explorer built, um, I'm going to build a, uh, a bay to build uh, health and science. And then after that, I will be uh, moving on to something bigger and better, hopefully. A pioneer. And Let's go, Warren. Jamal Barry, what's his face? He's the African Union guy. Sam Samar Jamal Barry. Uh, so, now that I have someone to talk to, I can show the diplomacy screen. Uh, so, first things first, you have uh, your affinity screen here. Big change, it wasn't here before. Um, and it just shows you, you know, which general direction are you going in, and you get specific points. So, by going for pure, you can go pure, you can go hybrid now. So, hybrid. Yeah, this is hybrid of uh, of uh, any two factions, I think. I, I don't know for sure. Right? No, no, it's different ones. But anyway, there are three hybrids, and there are three names here. Yeah, here's the the, the possible hybrid options. There we go. Um, for personality traits, you have your personal personality traits, and they are upgradable by using this new stat called diplomatic capital. And you can also buy new ones. I don't have enough to show off what they look like yet. But there's some for political, domestic, and military. And you have to choose one of each. Right now, I have uh, an extra domestic one. So this is... Sword uh, the Savitar Jama Bare. And I can only do two diplomatic options. One is to change our relationship. So I can spend diplomatic capital to get us higher up on our status. And you'll note here we have respect and we have fear. How you gain respect is by doing things that this guy is in favor of. How you lose respect is doing things this guy hates, which is, you know, can feel very random, but they'll tell you. They'll tell you what the things are. So you can actually actively work to being friends with these guys by playing in a certain way. And right now I can be cooperative with him by spending some diplomatic capital. I'm not going to, because it's diplomatic capital. And allied is not too far off. And allies give you uh, full military, military uh, advantage stuff and makes you better trade partners. So this is the diplomatic agreements. Uh, he has two available. I can buy them. They will cost uh, diplomatic stuff per turn. So this one's three per turn with a 25 up cost. And that'll put me at plus two in terms of growth. Instead of plus five, it'll put me down to about 30 diplomatic capital. And buying these will also make us friendlier towards each other. And he, I have ones I can sell him as well. And mine happen to be really, really good. Uh, let's see if I can find it once my turn is up. Okay, so it's on the other here. I have these two here. They mine are really good. Energy maintenance, military units reduced, and capital energy yield increased by plus 25. Both of those are really good. Really, really, really good. Um, and it's actually really common for computers to grab those from this particular faction because they're just so freaking good. They're really, really, really good. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be just doing this thing where I kind of use my three explorers, move around, pick up these uh, pods wherever I can, and then I will be um, looking for places to dig around with. If I can dig around, I'll be doing great. 
Uh, let's see, science per population, and culture, that's terrible. Health is something in this game that is never that high, so you'll never actually get that much culture from your health. Like, at best, plus one, right? Like, it's not that good, actually. It's, a very, it's not bad for tier one talent, especially on easier difficulties, but at this difficulty, it's basically pointless. Pointless talent. And I don't know why the game did this. Why they put that in there. It was really, really, really good for the talent. Yay, we got another five. Uh, mine here, they say. I've only got three here, so there's not actually that much I can build. So I'm gonna build a clinic here, and I'll head this guy this direction, and then this guy will pick up this little, little uh, expedition module and head on this merry way. It'll have three explorers moving around, exploring, finding out where all the fancy uh, things are. And I got this thing as well. Sit for the caffeine. It's a, it's a coffee maker. It's a Keurig, probably. So, an early 22nd century century coffee maker. Uh, it's like a modern. It's a, it's a super Keurig. The universe. So I discovered pioneering because of that. Uh, next up, I'm gonna get chemistry. It is recommended, but I'm gonna get because they have submarines. And submarines are so good. They're an invisible unit that. Uh, deal a fairly high amount of unit damage, and uh, the AI of the game works very weird against these submarines. They don't, uh, they don't do a lot of damage to them, which is really weird. They won't actively hunt for them, I should say. If that works out. So we now know that that's the African we some coral here. So that's good. Ooh, we have a lot of coral here, actually. And coral is actually good. And it's such a weird thing to say. Coral is good. No, it, it shouldn't be good, but it is. Coral is very, very good. Uh, I'm gonna pull this guy all the way down here. Because, uh, uh, the floor is gonna run into each other in terms of tapping. Yeah, Coral is actually very good. And the reason why Coral is so good is that, uh, that's something I can catch. I guess knees. Second. I'll explain it later. Choo! God, sneezes are terrible. Ooh. The reason why Coral is good is because Coral can be, uh, shot by your your boat and allow them to level up. And that's going to give you a huge advantage in terms of efficiency. Now the enemy of course will be firing on all the aliens non-stop all the time. I'm not going to be because I'm playing Harmony and I think it's easier for your explorers to move around if they don't have to be randomly assaulted by, uh, by uh, aliens. So, ooh, I have a stuff of pollution that uh, yeah. I think that's a big part of the game that's worth mentioning. So, 10% less culture needed for virtue. Sounds good to me. The amount of virtue you need actually increases by the number of cities that you own, which gives you a disadvantageous stature for expanded cities. But expanded cities also gives you the ability to develop more culture, which is kind of good, because then you can actually uh, get more resources out of it. And hey, Do we have all all the new factions in this game? It kind of feels like it. So I'm not gonna take any of these. Wow, that's like a lot of freaking nests over here. Uh, so let's get that colonist built. And we can do other stuff later. I want to build a uh, a gunship later on. And our final partner joining us, uh, I'm going to say that's the Slavs, if I guess the Slavs. I mean, I was wrong about this, I said that's Franco-Iberia, it's totally not Franco-Iberia though. And, what's this green here? Is someone expanding in here? I'm confused. Hey, we got an expedition completed, which gave us production towards our colonists. right away, that is the best possible thing that could have happened. Uh, when you're building a colonist, you can't actually build anything else. It actually kind of sucks. Um, really, really bad. And it means that you can't grow your population, which is really, really, really bad. So I'm going to build a gunboat. It's going to take 16 turns, 17 turns, so that's a lot. 
and uh, you want big cities. Big health, big health cities have lots of citizens that will be able to develop different tiles and uh, will therefore increase your productive capabilities. I think that's one of those fucking things down there. Did I see any other businesses? I That looks very familiar to me. No, just that one, which I... These giant ones you can't actually get into, which is kind of strange. Kind of strange, but I get it. So we have production and science and production. Let's go with science and production. I'm going to have to build, uh, eventually build a trade colony towards these things. And these colonies actually level up over time in terms of their trade capabilities, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, they'll become very, very powerful eventually. Not militarily powerful, but in terms of trade. To the point where other people want to trade with them and further update them. So I'm going to jump in on that. Jump on it, jump on this. If this is Megan, this is actually the Slavic Republic, which means this here could be who? The Iberians? Franco Iberians, perhaps? Okay, so this is going to be the best bet. It's a little subtle for Harbor. Uh, if I move one step here, I'll have access to these shells, but this gives me access to eggs, which is just good. And I get a soldier from that. His, uh, soldier in here. And check this while it's being built, because it's... Although I did land that, it's not actually built yet, which kind of sucks. Kind of sucks. After I'm done with this uh, gunboat, I'm going to build some of these uh, submariners. Um, one thing I do know about the submariners is that through the harmony tree, they can be A upgraded. four billion year old world... To have more movement speed, uh, which is very, very good. So put genetics. Um, movement speed is very, very good. Very, very good. Um... And with more movement speed, these guys only have two movement speeds, so that's why it's very good. Oh, 10 fungi? Jesus Christ. I gotta clean them? There's gonna be a lot on the map. And yeah, with four movement points, they become ridiculous. At two movement points, they're not that good. They're okay, but they're not that good. And uh, yeah, that's. Uh, there we go. There's this. Oh, that's the African Union again. They've really expanded. They probably start off with three colonists. Is probably what it is. And that's the African Union in a nutshell. They are they are mass expansionists. They love expanding, and uh, that makes them exceptionally dangerous on the map because uh, in a heartbeat they'll just take this whole territory, and nobody will challenge them because that's their way of life. That's their culture. Why would you question someone's culture? Research computing. I think I'll do that next. And we met up with the Brazilian. El pueblo unido de Sudamérica le da la bienvenida. Who uh, are very aggressive militarily. That's just part of their MO. And it looks like we have coral here. So, I mean, I think I knew it was there before. And I just probably forgot about that. Once I have fair up and running, I'll be pretty golden. I'll be able to build up a lot of stuff. Stuff is always good. That's actually not bones. That's actually resolute. My bad. And we have a fire axis here. Or fire axite, sorry. Named after fire axis, the uh, studio that makes this game. Good of them to put themselves in the game. And they're a resource that we can use. Okay, away we go. We've already found some alien rippers. Alien rippers are a three movement uh, alien. I know this because I've captured one before. They're, they're of the two two ocean units. They're the stronger. There's a third one that's stronger than them. Um, it's kind of like this weird shell-like thing. It's pretty, it's pretty tough. All right, so we found the Cavathon Protectorate. The tip Kind of crappy for them to build so close to me. Uh, there will be an inevitable war between the two of us because I will be expanding towards her and she'll be expanding towards me and we will be angry together. You and I and I and you and you and I together. See, I'm already pretty close to her. I mean, and look at this. See this guy here, the African Union? He's now on one, two, three, four bases already. Four freaking bases. So he's mass expanded. He is mass expanded. I'm gonna take this from her. That's mine. Can't have it. I got some uh, energy, which is not too bad. I can buy things with that. I'm going to explore this area here with this guy. Just kind of keeping busy while this guy is kind of walking around. 
doing you know what saying you know who okay so there is miasma here so I'm actually gonna heal this guy up first then we'll do that and look we have some pods next to some hydro portal how nice is that this is a newer thing I think the alien scarab I don't really remember it in the old game um, they're not a crazy powerful unit but they're more powerful than their base unit they're very fast movement speed though they'd be like the uh, the cavalry unit for the aliens if that makes sense at all yay got another one of these artifacts so now I can show this thing off here so we have the ability to mix the three of these and get Frontier Stadium, which is really good by the way. Plus 10 defense, military units start. And this is not a research project, uh, this is actually just one building. And you get these buildings through combining these artifacts and there's only so many. So I've got the Frontier Stadium, which is amazing. Really, really amazing. I like it, love it a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's a limited number of artifacts on the map, but you can also create artifacts. Uh, every time a city is destroyed, an artifact is created. It's part of the game. Every time you, um, every time you destroy it, an uh, alien, uh, what do you call those guys? An alien worm, I guess they're called. You get another one of these. Uh, so let's go with the trade depot. Get 4% less science penalty for new cities if you do a new city after all. And that's genetics, and I'm gonna go for computing because I need engineering as well. So that's not too good. And uh, there's a lot of cool things I can do, like uh, see this Billy here? It's from Alien Life Forms 31 Research. Explorer units may leash alien units. So after I get that, and that'll be a while down the road. Uh, once I get that, it gives these explorers kind of an extra use. They can sacrifice a large chunk of their health in exchange for capturing an alien. And they can capture most aliens, except for the big heavy guys. Um, they can't capture them right off the bat. There's actually a second technology research for that. So let's grab this here. And we're gonna begin the process of destroying Hydro Coral. Now Hydro Coral is very hard to destroy. I should mention that right off the bat. Very, very difficult to destroy. Uh, it's got a lot of hit points on it. It's gonna take a lot of ships to do that. It does heal up a little bit over time. But it's worth doing because uh, you can actually get a lot of experience from them. So, non stop. And then, after the trade depot is done, I'm going to build up a trade unit. And then I'll build another ship. Probably a submariner next time. Just to be fair and balanced. That recommendation up there, they always send these emails that give you recommendations. That, that one's recommending that I, I do uh, an agreement. With one one. So this will give me nine uh, per turn of diplomatic capital. And like I said, diplomatic capital is actually really good. Diplomatic capital I can use to uh, build an upgrade. So here's a good example yield from your seed developments increased by 175%. Up, so up at another 25%. That's pretty damn good. But let's look at the other ones. Uh, for Political, we have a lot of variety here, and that's based on political decisions, military, trade, those sorts of things. Those are, after all, going to be uh, political nature. Uh, domestic is pretty damn good. I have one domestic one already, but this is flat, pretty both flat gains, food, health, production, uh, culture. You know, that's that, that's what you call your domestic. Um, there's some military-oriented ones, like uh, strength of uh, fighting inside your cities. That's pretty good. And the last one is going to be military. This is all military unit focus. So, you know, culture from killing units. Uh, more production towards military units. More health. More experience. Ma less maintenance costs. Gain science. More damage. Trade routes. Yield more. That's a weird military one. Yields from the tra station trade routes. That's a weird one. Uh, so I'm going to be adding on a new trait completely, and it's you're actually better off to just add on a new trait completely um, to start off. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I'll get yet. Maybe I'll go with the health. Um, and the agreement for this is more health from strategic resources. 
which actually seems better than the one that I'm getting for some reason. And that will make me super de duper healthy right now. I do need this trader though because I am currently negative on uh, my energy. And uh, I will be ending, of course, here today. Uh, tomorrow I'll be playing the Civilization Beyond Earth again and make my way to victory. So I'll see you guys then.